I hate Woody Allen, just to put it out there. I don't, I don't understand the hype he has. These are exactly the kind of premises he does. You know, bad people getting away with bad things. I, in fact, came up with what this movie should have been called, since it's so close to bad Woody Allen movies. My suggestion, Blind and Misdemeanors. What are you talking about? Wait, I have more. Blind Jasmine. Brother, we don't have that much time. Midnight in Pune. Oh, God. Wait, here's the best one. <laughs> are you laughing at it? I am. In advance. Okay, I can't wait. Vicky Donor, Christina Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> Muncher. In a world filled with war, hate, suffering, and Justin Bieber, two guys fix it all with a battle about a movie. One film, two opinions, one coin, two sides. They feud. You decide. It's time for Film Feud. Hello and welcome to another episode of Film Feud, the podcast where we debate whether top rated movies should be top rated. I'm Vidur. And I'm Vikram. What's up, Vikram? Nothing much, man. How you doing? Good, man. Good. Ready to feud today? Obviously. Obviously. The doy. The doy. A don. A donk a donk. What? Do. What? Oh, I got carried away. <laughs> Clearly, man. Before I go on, why don't you explain to the good folk what we're doing here? Gladly. So we take a movie from the IMDb Top 250 list, we toss a coin, heads argues for, and tails argues against. Pretty simple. I'm pretty pumped for today's feud because we're about to feud a new entrant to the IMDb Top 250. A homegrown entrant. A homegrown? A desi entrant. That's right. The movie we were feuding this week is Andadun. Or Andadun, as most people looking at the list will call it. <laughs> Andadun, man. I have actually not seen this movie. Have you seen this movie? I actually have not either, and I've heard a lot of hype about it. It is thankfully on Netflix, so we don't need to um, uh, watch it on the other streaming website we might have been tempted <laughs> to, which is the Blu-ray, Blu-ray Bay. I was, I was going to buy the Blu-ray, but, you know, uh-huh. I just go to Blu-rayBay.com and, yeah. and just stream it from there. But my point is I'm going to watch it legally, which I always do. Yeah. And I'm pretty pumped because I've heard a lot of hype. Just want to check out what the fuss is about. Same, man. I'm actually pretty excited. I haven't seen a Bollywood movie in the recent past generate the sort of hype that this one has done. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's always been like, oh, it's smashed the box office and oh my God, this, that. But this movie is very, it's, it feels like it's a good movie. I just want to say that. Oh, laying some cards out on the table. I like it, Vikram. It's a new avatar for you. And I do mean avatar, like the IMDb Top 250 movie. Oh, not avatar? Not avatar. Okay. Well, what I'm thinking is this movie is pretty much like the Oscar hype movies that come out this time of year, you know? Oh, is it that good? Yeah. I haven't read I haven't read too much into... It's hype. That's all I know. I don't know if it's good. I'm not laying out any cards, Vikram. Clearly. Well, what I'm excited about is seeing how the trailer translates because this movie had an epic trailer. Oh, I haven't seen the trailer either, actually. I recommend you watch the trailer as well because the trailer got me really hyped. So that's why I'm super pumped about this feud. I feel like I'm going to skip straight to the movie. Okay. A purist. Uh-huh. Should we get to it? Let's do the coin toss. Yeah, let's do it. Well, I'll be tossing the coin. And if it comes heads, I argue for. And tails, I argue against. Good luck to me. Toss away. And it's tails. And, Vidur, how do you feel about that? Well, good thing I haven't seen the movie. I don't have an opinion to share. Fresh eyes. Look through the hype. Uh-huh. People get pretty blindsided. For, forced to look wait, through the hype. Wait, forced wait. To, okay. Acknowledge I'm my s- pun first. I'm sorry, sir. People get very blindsided with the hype. Ah. And I'm not going to be one of those people. Okay. I'm just really excited to go watch this movie, man. And, uh, yeah, let's just see how that goes. All right. Let's do it. But before we do, a shout out to our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Flow Mattress. What is Flow Mattress? It's the promise of the deepest sleep of your life. They have a unique 100-night trial policy, so you can actually sleep on the mattress for 100 nights, and if you're not sleeping substantially better, then you can send it back for a full refund, no questions asked. And because the mattresses are shipped directly from the factory to you without any middlemen, they are 50% cheaper compared to traditional brands. They start from only 9989 Log on to flowmattress.com to find out more about this disruptive offering. That's flomattress.com. FilmFeud listeners get an exclusive 10% discount when they use the code FilmFeud on their purchase. With that, let's go watch the movie. Let's go watch the movie.
That was the biggest drop between a trailer and a movie. Oh, surprise, surprise. Why is this movie so hyped, Vikram? Just tell me. Just tell me in one sentence why is it so hyped. Not even sentence, dude. It's like three words because it's magnificent. Magnificent. It's so good. Wunderbar. This, this movie is universal. Do you realize that? No. It's, it's very rare for a Bollywood movie to be re- universal. This movie would be appreciated as much as it has been in Bollywood, as it would be in Hollywood or Europe or anywhere. Anyone who sees this movie will like it equally. This movie is barely Puneversal. Puneversal? It's set in Pune, right? It's barely good in Pune. Ugh. It's a world-class movie, man. It, you know what? You, I know you're going to hate me on this, but it feels like a Coen Brothers movie and that's high praise, dude. Exactly. It feels like the worst Coen Brothers homage ever made. Come on, dude. And there's a rabbit at the start of the movie and that rabbit actually plays out and creates this like Coen Brothers-esque Pulp Fiction-esque coincidence that plays into the ending of the movie. This this is great direction. This is Raghavan's best work. Forget Raghavan's best work. I haven't seen all his works. I've just seen another movie. But I'm saying there are very few filmmakers, Indian or not, right, who can create such an experience on screen where you're equally shocked and amused. And to bring it all in one package is pure talent. And it's very evidently seen in this movie. No, it's not. I was actually able to predict half the things that happened. And the ones I weren't were like jump scares. And the ending was predictably, oh, you know, whatever, whatever you want to interpret it. I'm sure we'll talk about it. You could predict the movie as it happened. Pretty much. You could predict that when he walked into her house to give a solo concert, there was a dead body of the dude lying there. No, but that's the premise. Jesus, man, you're not even getting my point. My point is this is like a bad Woody Allen movie. Woody Allen movie? Woody Allen did it better in like all the movies he made about crimes. Firstly, talking about did it better... We already discussed, Raghavan himself did it better. His previous movies are better. Obviously, like, if you want to go to the liver, kidney angle that the second half is all about, Ship of Theseus did it better. A movie you're too much of a pleb to have seen, I already know. Have you seen Ship of Theseus, Vikram? Mm, personal information. Huh? Ah, ah. You're setting yourself up for some really bad feuds in the future. In the future, but for now, one of the best outputs of Indian cinema you haven't seen also okay. happens to be your organs. Obviously, every Coen Brothers movie, I mean, this this is probably close to like a Fargo or something. I don't know, like high-premised Fargo. So much better than Woody Allen, man. All of Woody, Have you seen Crimes and Misdemeanors? I hate Woody Allen, just to put it out there. I don't, I don't understand the hype he has. These are exactly the kind of premises he does. You know, bad people getting away with bad things. I, in fact, came up with what this movie should have been called, since it's so close to bad Woody Allen movies. My suggestion, Blind and Misdemeanors. What are you talking about? Wait, I have more. Blind Jasmine. We don't have that much time. Midnight in Pune. Oh, God. Wait, here's the best one. (laughs) Are you laughing at it? I am. In advance. Okay, I can't wait. Vicky Donald, Christina (laughs) Basco. You should just you should just use that one. <laughs> I had to build to the good stuff, man. I was great. Vicky Donor, Barcelona, Christina. That's good, man. Yeah. Well, anyway, I could predict most of the things the way you can in Woody Allen movies. So that's just sad. That's a sad situation. That's a sad outlook to this movie, man. You force you're forcing yourself to just just take this route, which is obviously not true. This is a fantastic movie. Let's just talk about the movie. Why let's don't we do that? It. Why don't we talk about the characters? Yeah, let's do that. Three key players. Agreed? Yes. Nope, you're wrong. One of them is absolutely unnecessary and not key. Why is Radhika Apte in this movie? Why is Radhika Apte in this movie? I'm starting to find her insufferable, man. As soon as I knew this movie is going to be on Netflix, I knew Radhika Apte would be in it. Even though this is not a Netflix movie. Yeah. Because it was on Netflix. Yeah, that was that was a little saturation in terms of Radhika Apte plus Netflix, Sa- Sacred Games and Ghoul and all. But I think she's I, overrated. I think she's the... Well, she's technically not the find of 2018 because she's done a bunch of stuff before this, Badlapur being one, but... She did Parched, which was like a hardcore indie. I mean... Yeah, she, she, like... she's, she's been there. She's actually... She has a good, decent body of work. But I loved Radhika Apte's output in 2018. I think, she, like, now she is the find because she's become mainstream. A lot of people know about her. I think she's tremendous. She's, firstly, wholly unnecessary. Her character is this weird POV character that switches and doesn't become POV because why would it be? Because she's barely in the movie anymore. Totally dumb decision to have a character that's so central to the first act and disappears and doesn't play a role beyond the first and third act. But her role in the first act is to sort of chip away at Ayushman Khurana's character. They, they use Radhika Apte to show this side of Ayushman Khurana, which would otherwise not be seen in the movie. So I think she does a tremendous job with that, their chemistry, their sort of interactions. As a POV character, right? Yeah. But then the POV switches to Ayushman after that, the main... No, no, POV is... Ayushman also has a POV throughout all of that. That's the point. 
that's my point. They shouldn't keep switching. I, I didn't enjoy that at all. And then her acting was like so blase. Am I using that right? Just blah. Just uh, whatever. So you just. Uh, I don't yeah, think picture. anyone. I can't think of any actress who could have done what Radhika Apte did with her character. She also slaps a kid, man. That's assault. This is 2018. So she slaps a kid. It's a movie. Things she happen. They try to kid. show real things in movies. Like people slap kids sometimes, especially kids not. kids who are prying into their private life. Yeah, very real things they show in this movie. You know how you just blind people by looking it up on YouTube and they're instantly blinded. You know how that happens. How right. real? People make bombs off of YouTube. I mean, this is this is different. How? Which brings me to Tabu's character. Firstly, stop trying to make Tabu sexy. This is my note to the world. Dude, I don't, I think, oh my god, Tabu, I'm so f***ing impressed with her, dude. What an actress. What an actress. Do you know she's even been getting a lot of love for that one line she talks about where she's cooking that crab or lobster and she's like, oh, it's an aphrodisiac. Oh, when her husband's video. Yeah, matlab mat poochna, lekin mein, spelling mat poochna, mein matlab bata dungi. I was like, what, this is so unnatural. Their whole relationship is unnatural. Tabu in that role is unnatural. Tabu and her husband's relationship yeah. is meant to be unnatural. I think they showed, a, it, they showed it in a very good way. They, they sort of allude to why the events of the movie happened because their relationship was unnatural. That's what you got from it? I just thought it was bad acting. I think it was brilliant acting. I think this was, this was one of the first movies of Tabu that I'd seen which wasn't focused on prep and how she executes the character and was more natural. So I really loved her character, man. And also how... She's like cold-blooded AF in this flick, huh? Like, amazing. Yeah, but out of nowhere. It's not like established. I mean, when the Coen brothers do it in like a Fargo or something, you sense something's wrong. In this case, one moment she's a cheater, okay? The next moment she's a killer. The moment after that, she's happy to dispose of the body in a suitcase. Oh, but she's feeling bad that her like boyfriend, whatever, lover, breaks the finger. And then slowly and slowly, she just becomes diabolical. Like... That's brilliant. She, but she actually says, I'm not a serial killer after she's blinded someone because she didn't want to kill him. Right. I mean, that's people, people, there are very few people who would be like, I'm a serial killer, I'm killing people, right? They would just like to think of themselves as not being there. And secondly, she's shown as a cheater as well as a murderer in the same scene, which we're obviously going to talk about the sequence. I think the pacing of this movie was brilliant, right? Like, from the start to the finish, like the way it ramps up was was very methodical, very organized. Like even his reveal that he wasn't blind doesn't come at the beginning. And it's at the perfect point in this movie. Like, no, oh, perfect. It comes 12 minutes in, yeah. I count it. And yeah. it's the only moment for the first 12 minutes of 12 minutes of running time when the movie becomes slightly interesting. You have to sit through 12 minutes of jack shit. For instance, the It's character building. They're they're introducing each character. They're introducing Radhika Apte. They're introducing introducing Ayushman Khurana, where he lives, what he does. Obviously, they'll take 12 minutes to do that. It is slow way. Too slow, uh, bad pace. It'll become rushed if it becomes sooner. And you know the whole why he was putting up a show... Tabu's arc interlacing with his, I think it was really well done in terms of the pacing of this movie. Very few Bollywood movies actually do it. They just front load whatever they're supposed to front load so that you get to the meat or the action or anything. This was actually very thought through. They show Tabu for two minutes and then just don't for another 15 minutes. That's good pacing. That's good editing. That's bad. This movie needs Why? A just because editor. it's Tabu doesn't necessarily mean that she has to be in the movie at every sequential frame. She's a key character that you don't keep up with. You just show that husband dynamic and then they disappear for 15 minutes. That's, trust me, that is not a good way to No, I, I actually disagree because they show Tabu's character in terms of just her interaction with her husband and to, to put a sense in the viewer's mind that her and her husband enjoy a relationship, a fruitful, positive relationship. And the next time it's shown is such a scare. It's It actually just like it's so scary to watch what the relationship has come to so i think in that terms it was perfect pacing perfect timing of showing characters and not showing characters did you actually just describe a relationship as fruitful in between the movie, a husband and wife in the movie yeah <laughs> it's a fruitful relationship they're they're riffing off each other in the movie so you get this sense that okay it's a nice relationship they're happy with each other boom they're not why <laughs> boom wow boom yeah. he's dead while we're talking about her husband can we just talk about this Anil Dhawan playing an actor who looks back at old movies of <laughs> he himself? He looks like a 70s character, man. Perfect. And his name is some something else. They should have just called him Anil Dhawan firstly. It would have been more hilarious. Right. And then he's just constantly looking back at old movies. What, the, what was the point of that? Because he's, he's actually homaging a lot of like old Hindi cinema, I guess, and a lot of sequences. A lot of those references probably flew by me. But to cast him is just so over the top. It takes you out of the reality. What would you him rather be? No, if they want to go with this, like, adding a sense of reality by having an actor look back at very believable because they were real 70s footage of himself, call him Anil Thavan. Why not just call him something else? 
How does that matter? Why call him something else? How does that matter? I, I fail to see the point. Because then it makes me break my suspension of disbelief. Okay, so I don't know much about not so well known Hindi movies from the seventies, right? So I I was actually thinking that this guy was a real actor. That's what his actual name is. I had to Google it after the movie. So in my mind, it was the same effect anyway. Yeah, because you're clueless. You actually knew who Anil Dhawan was. Yeah, the actor. Yeah, just look I in knew. my eyes, Sudhir, and tell okay, me wait, you wait. knew who Anil Dhawan wait, the wait, actor wait. was. I I knew I knew that that wasn't his real name. Okay, which is enough to break the suspension of disbelief. Okay. I just think it was a weird move. But let's just stay on taboo. Since we're talking about the husband, mm-hmm. how is she not a suspect? And also, because of her point, inspector boyfriend, Manish Vij, who, by the way, menacing AF dude. Manish Vij played the exact same character in a Netflix movie called Whatever. Okay, that helps. The exact same character. I haven't seen that character. I this is this. his one mode. But I have, right? And that's why it was ultra boring. It's so, it's the same thing with like a Pankaj Tripathi, man. Like they play the same sort of... <gasps> How? They'll stare they'll, you. They'll play the same type of role. Pankaj Tripathi is like one of the best talents we have. Exactly. This is just a guy who... Um, that's a, what I'm trying to say. Just because he's playing the, a role in the same vein doesn't mean he has a, he's not doing an equally good job or a better job. No, 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 no. It, it is exactly that because this is not a performance. This is just his one mode that is being harnessed for this role. All right. So maybe he doesn't have that much depth, depth as an actor, but... He, range. He has no range. He has no range, but he's being able to portray this character really well. So I think he did a tremendous job. No, man. I feel like I'll feel the same way once I see Netflix's whatever. It was the exact same. Literally. He, in fact, chased Great, I loved it. So them. I'm more than happy to consume that also, sort of... Also, what happens to him in the end? Oh, he's, he's... I think the last scene they show him is when he's stuck in that elevator, right? That's yeah, they, his, they that's leave it open. End? Yeah, they leave it open. I mean... What do you think happened to him? Oh, please. Not yet. Not yet. No, let's, no. We're coming to that. Let's save this. Let's warm you up. So Tabu's not a suspect. She throws a granny off the 20th floor, still not a suspect, after the police officer was told by the granny that Tabu is a suspect. This is the believable film that I'm supposed to be watching. Yeah, what's wrong with that? You've you've been in India long enough to see how police cases work out. Oh, here we go. If the head of that investigation is involved with Tabu to the extent that he's involved with Tabu in the film, obviously, I don't, I don't not believe that. In fact, it's actually very realistic. To the only acting I'll grant in terms of realistic and relationship is Manish Vijay's the police inspector's wife. Mm-hmm. I thought she did a great job. Agreed. I wish there were more of her in the movie. Oh, what? No, I think she. That, I think it was the perfect amount because the character didn't have anything to add more than that to the story. So, but she did such a good job. That is believable. Manish Vijay was actually detracting from the realism of the movie, and she was adding to it. That's my one and only concession, by the way. That's great. I feel like. Even though she did a tremendous job, because her role should not have been extended just because she's a great actress, that makes no sense, obviously. If she would have had more screen time just for the sake of a good actor being on the screen, it actually would have taken away from the movie. So it was perfectly balanced in that situation. Uh, can we talk about Ayushman Khurana, by the way? Yeah. Mr. Mr. Akash. Good old Vicky Donor. Good old Vicky was that Dona. his name? I forgot his name already. I forgot his character name. Akash, I just said it. Okay. Are you purposely deaf right now <laughs> i'm just pointing out how his name in the oh, movie was not memorable. oh my god yeah i this think is, he's vicky dona bro vicky dona killed it by the way in this movie vicky dona killed it in 2018 can we just give him a good shout out okay shout guy, out. guy deserves it shout like, out for killing it except for in this movie except for in this movie so basically he he didn't need much in this movie he didn't need he play he's playing a guy pretending to be blind do you realize how hard that is to portray you know i heard that he actually went through a lot of like effort and training for that i guess Okay, sometimes, you know, the better you are at something, the easier it looks. And sometimes things are just easy. Now, I don't know which of the two it is. Okay, I lean towards just, easy. Just, let's just forget about what we know he did or just everything about acting or anything. You and me just talking right now. Do you think to act as a guy who's pretending to be blind and pull it off in a manner that seems believable is hard or easy? Govinda I'm just did it in... I'm just asking. I'm just asking you. Hard or easy? Let's not get Govinda into this. Govinda did it in Hasina Maan Jaigi. Do you think that was it believable? Was a breeze. Do you think it was believable? It was a breeze. I don't think he did a believable job. I, I think, think that's a key question. I think it was question. entertaining. That's what's most important. No, was it entertaining? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it is. No, and I think he did it in a very believable manner. I think he pulls it off really well, which is... I mean, kudos to him. You can't not give him a knock for that, dude. What do you want? A Filmfare Award for him? Jeez. No, I want a... Um, I don't know. A what pat I, on the back? A pat on the head? I want I want something positive from you. That's all I want. Okay, apparently he played the piano himself. Okay, Respect. that's great. Except, except, why did they shoot it like a 70s movie where the person is obviously not playing the piano themselves? And so, 
they just keep cutting between his hands and his face like it's a 70s movie right if he's playing it show him playing it they actually don't i think they do in a couple of scenes that they barely were, at like the bar but they are barely at the bar like, at his home uh, there's this one scene in the good sequence that we're going to talk about which is at their house there's a camera cut which is directly without any cuts is moving from the piano to his face only once isn't it weird that Thrice, it's happening only once i mentioned oh no but i mean that camera cut they should just have white shots it looked like nasruddin shah from mohra when he used to play the ca- when he used to play the piano i have no idea what you're talking about oh, <laughs> nasruddin shah was in mohra how dare you okay, we I'm have sorry. to feud mohra okay you have to be against though no no the coin will know <laughs> which way i am but nasruddin shah and mohra plays the piano it always keeps cutting i know what you're trying to say you're trying to say it should be more lala landish right exactly that's where you're getting to yeah okay that was a different movie in terms of what it was trying to show it was trying to show the focus was on him being a pianist through and through whereas here it's all the pianist oh and you thought just cu- out of curiosity you know what i thought no 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 you know what i thought no i have no idea of course you do uh uh-uh. uh a thick fat pianist <laughs> <laughs> oh god and in this movie although the the foundation of this movie is that he's a musician but the story doesn't develop in that way so i don't mind the non focus on his piano skills here did just, you watch the end credits i did it's just movies from the 70s or okay. 60s or 50s or whatever actors playing the piano and it's just actors playing the piano yeah. that's exactly what he looked like yeah. so maybe it was an on purpose homage sure but speaking of the credits they literally pulled youtube videos and added them onto the credits that's great dude some of them have watermarks some of them say shimaru niche some of them say like tips or i think that's on purpose No, I think they just used the footage like fair use like a YouTuber. I think that's on purpose, man, because they they try to show the whole Shamaru and like all of these old sort of You can't organized. just do that. Of course you can. So if if weird. they couldn't it wouldn't have been done. You no. think he didn't go through a process of permission you and stuff? You think he did? It's India, bro. It's 100%. the same it's the same thing you said. 100%. This is a Bollywood movie which is mass and reaches out to so many people. They of course I don't know why you're talking about this. Can we come back to Arshman Khurana? Yes. Can you please I, I'm getting pissed off that you're not acknowledging how good his performance was here. His performance was fine, serviceable. Serviceable? Yeah. Jesus dude, there's not much to talk about anymore about it. What about his character? Him. What's he doing? His character just wants to be a musician and he And he, so he pretends to be blind for the art. Yeah. He, yeah. That's very clearly established in the movie, right? And then it? and then after he watches shit go down, then he goes again to see Tabu coincidentally kill the old lady. And Tabu's doing it in front of the elevator, separate point. And then what he says that I'm going to tutor his daughter and I'm going to like teach her to play the like why is he involved the point at which he decides to run away is so far down the road from when he should no so obviously the entire movie is about his conflict with what he believes he should be doing in terms of pursuing or becoming a better musician as opposed to what he's actually witnessed and his moral obligations to reveal those when that first sequence if they'd actually address that and by the end of it before, because of his experiences he's a better musician maybe that's all worthwhile otherwise this is just a dumb premise i don't agree with that because uh when he finds out that she's murdered someone all right we we'll, let's just jump to the sequence after this but i just want to wrap up here once he finds out that that a crime has been committed his first instinct is to go to the police so it's not like he's conflicted in terms of oh what i should be doing in this and that, that it's only when so predictable dude but only when he sees the inspector being involved in the investigation and he realizes that Uh, this is not something i can win that's when he starts to pretend to just keep going with it it's not like that's his first instinct that whole scene at the police station uh, actually the scene afterwards where he pretends to just freak out and tell everyone what he is actually happening when he's being asked to sign a statement oh that was such a good cut dude. which is a dream sequence yeah. come on you didn't know that was a dream sequence i mean it was there for a second literally but still like a lot of these like it's just thriller. a good it's just a good sort of engagement tool i feel like yeah it's a filler tension building moment that's weak there need to be real tension building moment i knew that was a freak out that i knew that was a dream sequence that kills the moment for me you know but what about the part when he first goes to the police station the guy the manish vich police officer is there and then he makes up some cockamamie story ki i saw like cat. a murder of his cat and then the movie goes on as though that's believable like the police inspector immediately doesn't do anything about it actually he goes with him to his house to just make sure he's not actually blind or not yeah but i 
isn't that enough to not believe him no I, come on man Why? come on come it on it could be a coincidence come on and obviously the policeman's hesitance to believe him shows that he doesn't believe him and obviously his correspondence with tabu shows that he doesn't believe him all right let's we skipped it all right it makes no sense you mentioned that this movie needs to have actual tension building moment i think the whole sequence when he goes to her house is completely tension building what do you i think there are so many of those as opposed to the fillers that let's talk about it that's there's one of those the sequence the sequence where he witnesses a cover up from murder hands down the best and most beautifully shot bollywood sequences i've ever seen in a bollywood movie would really? you disagree you know i heard the hype for the sequence and i have to say from a technical perspective it was really pissing off i'm not like a film expert i'm a film you pretend to be yeah but it was not well done man i mean the way they actually cut from his pov uh huh actually changes like you can tell they had to do it over two takes and they couldn't set up the camera in the exact same way that made me so sad and then th- there are so many better ways to do the reveal than they do like the way the sitting the way like the the blocking of that scene, if that like just the way the room is set up it's so weird because they needed a wide shot right of the whole room and her doing stuff it didn't work for me at all they should have just kept it like non gimmicky and it would have been fun I have no better expression when than just than to say jaw dropping because the way everything comes together, including the music, the entire time he's playing the piano th- throughout the sequence, right? And the way they show his entrance, where Tabu's just hesitant in terms of oh, me, me, batae ni. Obviously, you don't get to know anything until they cut to the other side of the living room where they show Mr. Sinha's legs. I was confused about what was going on there because he says he's going out on vacation and he's booked him. And so I was pretty confused leading up to that point. So which was on purpose obviously right? yeah, to was. throw everyone off in terms of what the what the happenings of that sequence were. And then you turn around and then you don't even see Mr. Sinha's legs. You just see a pair of legs. And then you see a little bit of blood or or turns out that that's wine and stuff. And then Aishman Khurana's expression and the way he sort of keeps his cool but then not keeps I think he did a tremendous job in the sequence firstly because why does Tabu let him in? She asks him if he's completely blind only afterwards. Yeah, but then it's indicated that he's blind. What do you mean? Yeah, concede that at least. That's so dumb. Why? Why does she let him in? Because Mrs. Sa starts listening in, and she doesn't want anything to get out of that house in terms of information or anything. Put like yourself that. in her shoes. Yeah, if my neighbor, my nosy neighbor, who I know is nosy, mm-hmm. peers out and starts seeing who am I talking to, kisse baat ho rahi hai, turns out that Mrs. Sa has. Am I saying that right, Mrs. Sa? Dissa, Mrs. Dissa has uh, has information that makes us suspicious. We find that out later in the movie. But if my nosy neighbor is peering in, I have this dude who I can see is blind. Who I, you can just say, "Sorry, bro, no deal. Go back." To but then, no. But the whole point is that he sticks around. He's like, "Oh, mere paise bhi ho gaye. Oh, ye bhi tha. Oh, ye bhi tha." It's not a matter of shooing him away. Shooing away would probably make Mrs. Dissa more suspicious. So she's like, okay, fine. She sees her coming out. She's like, okay, come in. Just come in and sit down. With the intention of murdering him, I guess, or she hasn't even thought it through. No, no. She she sees that he's blind. So with the intention of him coming in, obviously, whatever whatever that sequence plays out like in terms of oh, are in ten minutes, me are in oh, बहुत अच्छा लगा चले गए. She has she has a skeleton of that in her head clearly. But that sequence, man, like him wanting to go to the bathroom, walking into the bathroom, seeing just random Manish was standing there, like that's a jump scare. One of many jump scares in this but, movie. But but the way they show jump scares in this movie is without the use of jump scare music or jump scare cutting or editing. It's just a simple pan of the camera to show there's a dude there behind him over his shoulder. In this case, maybe they pan. I can't remember. They didn't pan. So he he stands. He starts to take a leap, and then and is. then they show just a camera. behind his shoulder and manish was just standing there staring at him so that means that as soon as he entered the bathroom he knew that there was someone there he saw it but he kept his cool and yeah, kept I'm it not together an idiot. i understand that thanks but it is a jump scare because it cut to a camera that reveals him there's also a jump scare with the scream mask when tabu is wearing the scream mask yeah. sitting in his kitchen those that, are jump scares man but that actually made me laugh then making me scared most jump scares make me laugh but the point is it's put in for the scares adding in like non character non plot like thriller tension i just think that's weak i mean listen it's okay it still makes for a good movie if you have a couple of jump scares but this movie is on the imdb top 250 right this so is an output just just a few jump scares in a movie doesn't mean it can't be a critically lauded movie man do you think like major movies in the imdb top 250 don't have jump scares i don't think jump scares is the issue here i think just the whole sequence and how it's stitched together the point is a jump scare is a hack that's the point It's all hack. movies have jump scares. No, they don't. Of what? course, all thrillers have jump wait, scares. Wait, wait, wait. Let me quote you. Give me a thriller which doesn't all have movies. a single jump scare. 
Tell me a thriller that doesn't have a single jump scare. That's impossible. Jump no. scares are part of it. I bet no David Fincher movie has jump scares. I bet they do. No, they don't. Okay, we'll we'll you revisit. Think Seven has jump scares? Probably. No. Yeah, probably. Okay, challenge. Yeah. Challenge accepted. Yeah, that's after this feud. It's our homework for the day. But the sequence, man, and what I loved most about the sequence was obviously Aishman Khurana's character, how he behaves, how Tabu's character behaves, how Manish Vijay's character behaves, and obviously the thing that's on top of all of this, which is the music, which is Aishman Khurana playing the piano. When he sees them actually pulling the body, Manish Vij, like them trying to figure out how to get rid of it. If you notice the piano, it goes so up tempo, and he's basically channeling his emotions through his music, which I thought was very impressively done. I think Manish Vij breaking the finger was the only funny part. That, it's not meant to be funny. Obviously, that was in the midst of all of that suspense and that sequence, having that funny sequence obviously adds to it. But I feel like that entire sequence, I can't think of anything in Bollywood that I've seen that's, that's done a better job of like a three, four minute sequence than that shot did. Bollywood throughout history. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Yeah, but that's because you can't think of anything. Still though. I mean, if I'd be happy to look at examples if you have any. No, I didn't come prepared with examples for scenes better than this mediocre scene. Given your film feud history, I wouldn't have been surprised. <laughs> that's true, that's true. I might have. I should have. I regret not doing it, but I still disagree with you saying that it's the best. It's it's okay. If you go back and watch it again, which I'm sure you will, the blocking and tackling that scene doesn't make sense. His POV keeps changing. And the one thing they did was that, oh, everything needs to be silent because obviously that's how they'll do it. And so the music takes over, okay, but then they go into the room, it actually takes away from the more interesting part. To say that these things need to be silent and unsaid, that means that you're actually not seeing a fascinating part of how these two now murderers would have dealt with it. But don't you think that how a sequence comes across in terms of when you're viewing it is the most important thing as opposed to, oh my god, they missed that was a bad cut there when you're re-watching it for the second or third time. It's when you're actually watching the movie and how you feel when that sequence unravels. That's the most important thing. And I think these guys, like, they, they achieved what they were trying to get to. Yeah, but it's so hyped and you just said it's the best ever. So, yeah, I mean, I did notice some weird technical and Sure, just... but I don't think those take away from the sequence It took away at from all. my experience, man. I'm a, I'm a more uh, sophisticated mm-hmm. cinematic mm-hmm. observer than you oh, are. And Not humble. Fault. And humble. And humble. Of course. Humility is your, your key point here. Modesty is the best policy. Modesty is the best policy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. I think, I think I've said what I wanted to say about the sequence and I, I feel like a lot of people would agree with um, how much they liked that particular sequence. I feel like we're just ignoring the second half of the movie. That sequence marks the start of the second act, yeah? For me, it's the music, man. And I feel like the music makes this movie. Amit Trivedi just... I love Amit Trivedi, but he's wasted here. Every time he does something, it's mind-blowing. Name two songs on this movie. That's below the belt, because you know I would know the names of them. You should know one, which is the one they keep repeating. Yeah, Nenada Kasur. Nenada Kasur. That's it. Name one more. You can't, because they're also forgettable. The the one when he's sitting on the hospital bed, he's tossing a coin, and he's plotting what his next steps are. I have no idea what song you're talking about. I think that's the title track. I think it's called Andadun. I have no idea what you're talking about, which is my point. Which is and your point, not mine. That's what I'm saying. I remember the songs from this movie. You don't. You couldn't even name the, the one. Naming the, and remembering the are different. And the point is... Amit Trivedi usually comes out with gold. Here, he sang Nana the Kasur, the most famous song. Okay, upbeat, cool. They use two songs back to back in a Bollywood movie. So lame, especially for an IMDb Top 250 worthy movie, which usually tends to be songless, you know, more focused on like the actual like international cinema vibe. Ayushman Khurana has four different singing voices in this movie. And the worst part about it is Ayushman Khurana sings... I think he sang one of the songs in this movie. Yeah, he did. So he has a very distinct singing voice, which was cemented in his first movie, Vicky Donor, Pani Darang. So what am I supposed to do? Not What is this, like 90s Bollywood? He just has four different no, singing this is, voices. this is current Bollywood. It's not like things have changed in Bollywood. They have. You can't have four different singing voices for a person. Come on, dude. This is not a Shah Rukh Khan movie, dude. Is that... Is that is the, Come on, dude. How dude, is that a problem? How this, is that a how is that a this no go? On the, we're, we're in film feud, not film feud Bollywood. This movie is in the IMDb top two fifty. We've had okay, fine. The songs are are a contention point here, but we've had heavier contention points in IMDb top two fifty movies as well. 
So I don't see why that's a problem. Fine, that's a nitpick that you had a problem against that. I had absolutely no problems. I'm going to say goodbye there. What a big deal. What happened? I'm not going to say goodbye. What's the problem? This movie is so focused on Ayushman Khurana, the musician, right? And Amit Trivedi playing the piano is power five, dude. He's so bloody good. Everything he touches is gold, literally gold. I think the music throughout this movie, even generally the score, like you know, the first act, second act, third act, when things are ramping up. Na 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 kasoor, ke kasoor, ke kasoor, na na. <laughs> cool. Are we done with your point now? Dude, movies and music throughout this movie, uh-huh. not just like first half, a second half, a third, I first act, a second act. Are we done with your point now? You know what the funny thing is? I know you know the lyrics of this song. I don't. I yeah, just know Nena the Kasur, the uh-huh. phrase. I think the music throughout this movie is brilliant. What the f***? <laughs> How many times do I have to sing before you shut up Completely about the music? Completely compliments the scene which we're seeing. Jesus. I give up. Are you done? Are you done with your music horse shit? If you bring up some bullshit then no, but Oh, wait, wait, wait. I will bring up some bullshit. The second half of this movie. What do you mean? Bullshit. Bullshit? Bullshit. What do you mean? Elucidate. The second half of this movie is a whole different movie, right? He's already been through everything. Then his revenge seeking is kind of just really lame. But before the revenge seeking like the third act comes, it's the whole kidney sequence the doctors the two different characters that happen to be from early in the movie yeah. and then he forms this ragtag team of like revenge like kidney stealer duo plus doctor what what is going on dude it's it's they it's messed up precision in terms of script writing and filmmaking to oh, uh, to completely come up with something new that the viewer is not expecting so i have i actually loved that this movie completely changed in Vikram, terms of the just, direction just be honest just just let go of your i'm always of honest your film feud coin like i'm andha. always honest just take off your black sunglasses uh-huh. for a moment yeah just to stop wearing your blind contacts for a moment uh-huh. and tell me is it good screenwriting to introduce three new characters that become central to the plot after the the second act if it doesn't seem forced then yes it's actually brilliant screenwriting after the second act if it doesn't seem forced it's actually brilliant screenwriting that's what i'm trying to say it it doesn't feel like oh who are these why are these guys here what's happening none of that that's happened exactly to exactly what it is no none of that happened throughout the movie man as soon as new characters were introduced you just like got swept away with that introduction and him getting blind is the second act low point agreed that's like in script writing that's like the the point where the hero's all is lost moment right That's when you introduce three new characters, but it didn't feel forced. That's what I'm trying to say. It If did. it felt forced in terms of oh, these characters are on there just to progress the story, then I agree with you 100. That's exactly what it was. And Come the doctor, on. by the way, I loved it. Great character. The doctor was a hilarious character. They actually even show some backstory about how he treats his kids, how he's at home. He, this is just so matter of fact for him. If they actually fleshed it out, that would be meaningful. They just have characters willy nilly, including Radhika Apte, one of the main ones, and the daughter of Tabu and all, a step daughter, just disappearing. And then the doctor ends up being one of them. So sad, man. The second half just confused me. If he'd kept up the momentum, like I believe he does in Badlapur and Johnny Gaddar, I haven't seen some of his other movies. I know Agent Vinod isn't that good. Would have been great. And that just ends up like standard revenge, whatever saga. The only thing I liked about it is Tabu's ucker just keeps increasing, no matter what situation she's in. I'm just like, okay, I guess this is something new for a for an antagonist. And then that ending, man, it just comes to that ending. Oh my god! Predictable. What an ending! Predictable. Not predictable. Not predictable. Firstly, Not predictable because there's nothing that leads up to that being the ending, right? I have never seen so much hype. never seen so much hype on the internet about a possible ending or the possible cause for an ending of a bollywood movie have you ever seen that like it's very nolan esque right inception ke end mein laddu gira ya nahi gira pata nahi bro that's exactly what this is except it's not ambiguous because he's obviously not blind he whacks off a can with his stick right okay so so let's just stop here what do you think is the reason for him not being blind i don't give two hoots come on just indulge according me according to bit. the movie it's a rabbit Indulge me. It's a according to the movie, it's actually nothing. It's very open ended. There are contradictions and uh, and uh, evidence for all sorts of hypothetical endings in the movie. Listen to me, Vikram. Assume you're blind, and assume all you need to not be blind is money. Assume you're a smart person. Five years from now, will you still be blind? What? 
That that makes no sense. If money it's, is the difference, no, let's you let's no, no, let's use Aishman Khurana's character as the point of reference, not Vikram. Okay. Aishman Khurana's point of reference is that he is forcing himself to be partially blind or blind so that he can focus on his craft. That's that's always been the foundation of this movie. That never wavers in any part, any act, or anything like that. He he will even if he has eyes, he will go back to being partially blind of or. or Pretending to be pretending. blind. Pretending. Pretending to be That's blind. A big difference. Yeah, I agree. What he does and how he gets to that ending is not laid out clearly in the movie. Yeah, so it's just not. But what do you think the reason for him being not blind by the end of the movie is? That he gathered the money to pay for it. That's it? Yeah. That's it? Like, so like he just so gathered... you're asking me, did he sell out Tabu or not? Did Tabu actually die? Did yeah. he kill her? Okay, so are you not indulging me? I'm just going to talk. Okay, there are three most popular theories this out there. This is the worst part of film feud come to life. <laughs> <laughs> You're not indulging me, so I'm just gonna talk. Yeah, I, I need to, man. Like, I need to address this. It's really important. You should too. So there are three most popular theories out there in terms of why people think he's not blind. Okay, let me guess. Again, Briefly. again, alluding to how many people are talking about this online. This never happens with the Bollywood. This is game changing. Do you realize that? It's amazing. This is a green flag for you that the fact that people are discussing this online. Yeah. Big whoop, man. People will discuss anything online. Not with. The, I've never seen this with the Bollywood movie. Yeah, but maybe you don't seek it out. Maybe there's like a whole thread about the ending of Three Idiots or the ending of... You know, like this. I, I knew hair. you'd say this, so I tried to do this with like mainstream Bollywood movies oh, that are coming to my mind. Nothing. We surprise, start surprise. Some. We should start. No, some. we Dude. should only do it when it's valid, which in this case is so valid. The ending of Rangdev What do you think happened? Do you think Shahrukh and Kajal actually got together at the end of TDLJ? I'm not getting derailed with this. I think we start a Reddit thread, bro. Yeah, we should. Or a Kora. Kora does better in India for some reason. But the three most popular endings. So you were saying you have a good idea what they could be? Yeah, one is that he's blind. One is that he's not blind. And within the not blind, there's two. Because one, he killed Tabu and one, he didn't. Okay, so kind of right. He's obviously not blind, though. He's obviously not blind. I agree with you. I, I want to agree with you. All right. It could have just been like, oh, can I guess Amne usne good timing? Kar di? I don't believe that. <laughs> just saying. I haven't read anything substantial about that as well. He just swung his stick yeah. and happened just, with a can. Just good timing. I don't think that was the case. I, I haven't read anything credible online that I, anyone thought that was the case. So uh, the first one is that a lot of people like you just did bring this correlation with the rabbit in place. You know, rabbit has one. Uh, rabbits, uh, they show that the rabbit's blind in one eye. And then they, they show this scene of him after he was poisoned by Tabu dunking his head in a bucket of water. And then one eye had like, one eye seemed clear and one eye seemed foggy. So people are like, oh, he was blind by one eye the entire time. That is really dumb. And he pretended. I agree because that, that scene where Manish was just trying to kill him and he runs away. Why would he run into a pole if he's half blind? <laughs> <laughs> and, and like wake up, like put himself in that situation. So I don't agree with that. The second one is that um, when, when he meets Radhika Apte in the final scene. And La La Land, by the way. They pull a La La Land. I don't know what you're talking about. The ending of La La Land, she's just walking and she sees like... They don't the, pull a La La Land. That's that's what the story is building up to be. He wants to go to London. Like she ends up meeting him in Europe. Shut up, man. So she's talking she's to him. She's upgraded to a white dude. <laughs> that's racist. So she's sitting with him. No, it's not. She's upgraded from Ayushman Kurana. A random no, you're, you're, artist. You're, just your one statement, she's upgraded to a white dude. She's up, super racist. The fact that she's upgraded, the you, dude you, happens to be white. You're saying that upgrading from a brown guy to a white guy. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying she's upgraded uh-huh. and the dude happens to be white. No, you said she's, she's upgraded to a white dude. She's No, she's upgraded <laughs> to a white dude. Because she was dating some like artist guy who was pretending as to be your friend. Blind. As your friend. I, I come to think of you as a brother now, right? That's racist. Please don't say no, that. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. Okay, so his discussion, his talk about, his reveal to Radhika Apte of There are happened. worse white dudes than brown people. Are you still on this? Know. Are yeah. you still on this? You shouldn't be. Brother, <laughs> okay. please stop. So she, uh, Radhika Apte is talking to him in terms of or fear. And then he goes on to reveal that Tabu lets him out of the car, takes a U-turn and tries to kill him. Apparently, that was all made up. Everything up until that point wasn't. So the doctor and him actually ended up going to the millionaire, the Middle Eastern millionaire, billionaire, I would rather, get their money. He gets Tabu's eyes or whatever. That's one sequence. I don't believe that either. And the third most popular one, surprisingly, is that everyone is overthinking. Yeah, I don't agree. I don't think that's true either. You know what? One thing that's missed out is during this whole course of when he finally convinces the doctor and those two people that they shouldn't sell his organs and he you know he says he says to the auntie that teri lottery lag gayi ab that's when essentially his plan starts coming into action they start showing that he's planning something and then they end up kidnapping tabu what i think actually happened was that uh 
he mentions to Radhika Apte that with the help of a friend, he actually ended up coming to London and started his life again. But they leave it there in terms of no details or anything like that, right? I think Dani was that friend, Dani being Tabu's stepdaughter. She was the one who actually sympathized with him. And after finding out what Tabu actually did, she wanted to help him out. So she's the one who pulled all the money together, sent him to London, got his eye surgery done. And he obviously continued to pretend to be blind because of his earlier beliefs that it'll make him a better musician. Or that it'll make him more money. I mean, who cares? I who care. cares who the friend was? I, you don't. No, but you're just saying that what he said actually happened and he's pretending to be blind. I don't know why the movie pretends otherwise because as soon as I saw him again, I knew he'd be fooling. Only because you watch movies, right? So you know the the ending of the movie needs a button, right? A punch. And so when they show him again, the most obvious button is that he's fooling again. And Radhika Apte is an idiot and actually believes that otherwise. I mean... I think if the movie would have ended not with that final frame of him kicking away the can with a stick, I think the movie's effect and what what you would think about the movie would have remained absolutely the same. No it was something way. that was added on top of it that just took it to the next level. It's the most obvious thing to add, man. That's why it's predictable. And by the way, these theories you're highlighting, all of them are really boring, by the way, just so you know. Like, who cares? Because what Nolan does is he takes something that leads out to multiple options is the top spinning being the most obvious one, right? So if it's spinning, it means something else. And if it's not spinning, it means something else. What they're doing here is showing you the top falling, basically the less exciting option that he's actually in not the real world or the dream or whatever, and then leaving it open-ended as to how the top fell to fill in the blanks. Which one do you think is better? No, I, I know what you're trying to say. I don't think uh, the Inception ending compares here because... They should have left it open-ended whether he's blind or not. That's what they didn't do. The I don't think can so. kicking no. is stupid. Think about it. No, so if, if the movie progressed as is and that final shot wasn't there, right... They were just leaving it up to the assumption of the audience that Ayushman Khurana is still blind. Whatever he was by the end of that tabu sequence of the rabbit hitting her car... He is like that. It would have been the easiest thing. They they literally could have just shown him taking off his glasses and cut to black before they focused on his eyes being glazed over or plain. It's the most simplest thing. In fact, on this note, you know, I read this amazing way of fixing the ending of The Dark Knight Rises. You remember The Dark Knight Rises ending with Alfred sitting in the coffee shop in Italy and the two of them, Batman and Catwoman, are like saying hi to him. You remember that? Mm -hmm. Now imagine this. Alfred, you've seen the ending where Batman flies into the in the ocean drops the bomb Alfred goes sits sits down looks down looks towards them seeing that he's seen someone and they don't show them and it cuts to black okay that's exactly what this ending needed without instead they've done the Dark Knight Rises they've literally just shown him kick the can and now you know you have the solution but don't you think the ending's effect goes away if you don't establish whether he's still blind or is not blind like no, if you, you just there's no way to leave that open ended, right? Of course there is. You come up with something. You come up with him taking off his glasses. He looks in the mirror and you don't know what color his eyes are. I don't think so, man. And I'm just, a better filmmaker than Sri Ram Raghavan. I, is my point. I know you don't believe that either. I'm just saying for a Bollywood movie, dude. Finally, to make it big and mainstream, this made 111 crores at the box office. is bloody brilliant. It gives me hope. It's like I'm in Star Wars right now, all right? And we just found the Death Star plans. It gives me hope for Bollywood. This. There's no better indicator that Bollywood's going I'm in the right direction. I'm shaking my head. This is a podcast, so I must say this out loud. Bollywood's the, going head. in the right direction if these sort of movies start becoming mainstream is all I have to say. Dude, there's a really good critic who said on the Indian Express that all of India is blindsided by Andhatun. I think that's the perfect state. I think the critic needs to find better puns. I think you're blindsided by Andhatun. I think you should go watch The Blind Side. And that's a better movie than Andhatun. I think... I've run out of blind movies. You know, we, we started the transition music already, right? Okay. And that was this week's episode of Film Feud. Thank you for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed. Now we feuded and you guys get to decide who you think won this week's feud. Make sure you vote on Facebook, Twitter or Instagram or our website. Let us know who you think won. Let us know what points you might have raised. Let us know what movie you want us to feud next. Don't forget to rate and review us on iTunes or if you're on Android, check us out on CastBox. 